up here and on my sixth anniversary show that I'm having here at the Count Basie Saturday, October 11th, starring Joe Jett and the Black Hearts with special guest Jesse Allen. Tickets went on sale this morning, so this is a perfect way to let you know that. Go get your tickets. But it actually turns out what I initially thought would be a simple plug for that event is not that at all. As I've been, as been, as I've been bestowed by the Basie with what may have been maybe my greatest honor ever is to present the first ever Vanguard Award to two of the coolest people of all time who have not only been inspiring and influential to me, they are pretty much to that for the entire universe. They are two people whose visions have changed the world and continue to do so. They are making it a better place, especially for their lifetime devotion to the arts of New Jersey, which is what the Vanguard Award stands for. But unfortunately, this award right here has a huge glaring spelling error. The first three letters are correct, V-A-N, but the last five, G-U-A-R-D, should really be spelled Z-A-N-D-2. We're going to start with Maureen. She's a North native, studied art and music at Arts High. She skipped school one day to go see the Beatles' first ever U.S. concert. She's trained to dance with the Garden State Ballet. She's appeared in the Broadway production of Hair, which is one of the most famous productions in the history of Broadway. She was at Woodstock, which you would think would add another layer of pressure to these rocket kids tonight, considering the theme of the evening. But Maureen's way of teaching, advising, and conveying things to artists of all ages actually helped remove some of that pressure from the kids. She was there for the building and the design, as well as the opening night of Electric Lady Studios. And Jimi Hendrix personally played his finished recording of All Along the Watchtower for her and a few friends before the record label or anybody else heard it. She was also part of the Metropolitan Opera Ballet. She started her own theater company. She's acted and produced in numerous off-Broadway productions, including the critically acclaimed Golden Boy. And her and her friend caused a near riot at a Rolling Stones concert in Newark, which forced the cancellation of the show, causing a future boss to not get to see the band that day. And to, that, and to this day, he still doesn't know it was Maureen is the reason why he didn't see the Stones. <laughs> She joined the cast of The Sopranos as Gabriella Dante and recently served as dance supervisor for David Chase's film, Not Fade Away. She's also the director, choreographer of the Garage Girls and Go-Go Dance Group. Also co-produced The Rascals, Once Upon a Dream on Broadway and is currently directing an off-Broadway play called Wild Children. She's also a proud board member of Little Kids Rock. And Maureen at one time was probably the country's number one fan and advocate of American Idol offering assistance and guidance to many of its finalists throughout the years. And ironically, Maureen and Stephen's dog Edie was given to them by David Cook from American Idol. And perhaps it's a coincidence that American Idol's content, ratings, and impact have diminished since Maureen has focused her energies elsewhere. Her vision and dedication to all forms of the arts is unparalleled. And then there's this guy who was lucky enough to marry one of the coolest chicks in history. His name is Stephen Van Zandt. I actually turned down doing my uh, radio show at first because the initial time slot I was offered directly competed with Stephen's underground garage program. And we were backstage at an East Street uh, band show and Stephen said, and I told Stephen that an area station had offered me my own show to do whatever I want, no format restrictions, no genre restrictions, no rules whatsoever. But I had turned it down because the time slot they offered me was on the same time as him on a competing station. Stephen looked at me incredulously, he grabbed my cheek and he said, listen baby, if some radio station in the most important city in the world is gonna allow somebody like you, who's never ever been on the radio before, to do whatever he wants and play cool music and tell great stories, you cannot turn that down regardless of what time you're airing. And I said, Stevie, I feel really un uncomfortable about that. And Stevie said, don't worry, now there'll be four great hours of radio programmed on the dial that's not corporate. The revolution has begun, little by little, market by market, station by station, hour by hour, radio will get better. So you take them up on the offer and you do that show. 
that made it much more comfortable for me. And actually, a couple months later, we were backstage at another show, and there was a program director from one of the radio stations asked Stephen if he had ever listened to my radio program and what he thought of it. And Stephen's response was, it's like my show, but on acid. <laughs> I take that as a supreme compliment. And when you try to get your head around all the things that Stephen has done and how he's a cultural icon on not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, he has five different levels, your mind gets completely blown. Of course, the first of the five is the musician, which encom encompasses his production expertise on Darkness, The River, Born in the USA, his guitar playing and stage presence on E Street, those landmarks, Southside Johnny and the Jukes albums, his own albums, including what is probably one of the top ten greatest albums of all time, Men Without Women. And there's also an album he's not released yet called The Lost Boys that probably is going to top them all if he ever decides to release it. Also his reformation of The Rascals and the work he's doing on the upcoming Darlene Love album. That would be enough for most people to rest on, but not Steven. Second, of course, is television, where he was a character, a main character, what is regarded as the best television drama of all time, The Sopranos. He is also the star, director, producer, writer, he writes the music of the first ever Netflix series, Lilyhammer. And that, by the way, had a 60 share in Norway. Now we know why Casey Kasem is probably getting buried there. <laughs> Lilyhammer was the first series ever on Netflix. Not House of Cards, not all the other stuff, it was Lilyhammer. Stephen blazed the trail on television, which has now taken over the industry. And that would be enough for most people to rest on, but not Stephen. And third, at a time when the world had given up on rock and roll on the radio, he single-handedly brought it back by himself, self-producing and self-syndicating the most successful rock and roll radio show of all time, paving the way for numerous rock bands again to take over the airwaves, the clubs, the arenas, the movie soundtracks, reaching over one million people weekly on what traditionally was the lowest rated and least listened to hours on radio. He's made Sunday night radio appointment listening. And he also created the first and what we all know is the best music channels on Sirius XM, the Underground Garage, and also Outlaw Country. That would be enough for most people to rest on, but not Stephen. Fourth, at a time where continual human rights violations and segregation and all sorts of atrocities were happening, he turned his focus on raising awareness to solve those problems, which in essence led his fellow musicians to follow his lead, doing the same and taking it even further. Bono. Bruce, Neil Young, Pearl Jam, and so on. Stephen is the godfather of rock and roll activism. And he has championed human rights like no other. His song, Sun City, truly changed the world. That would be enough for most people to rest on, but not Stephen. And the fifth is the reason we are here tonight. And one of the most important things I've ever heard Stephen say or in that case, I've heard anybody ever say, and it's left an indelible mark on me, and it's this, and I'll probably leave an indelible mark on you. Our country, the United States of America, does something that no other country in the world does, and that covers the rich countries, the poor countries, the free countries, the communist countries. This one thing that our country does that no other country does is mortifying on so many levels. It's that we are the only country that treats art as a luxury. Think about that. Art. Learning about it, the experience that one school at a time, one grade at a time. Stephen and Maureen have always been and always will be in the forefront of making that sad, sad programs like Rocket and all that the Count Basie does for the arts for all levels of income and for all ages. I am humbled and honored to present the first ever Vanguard Award honoring their lifelong devotion to the arts of New Jersey and really the universe to Stephen and Maureen Van Zandt.
teachers is so important, and I hope you'll all continue to support it. Since the theme tonight is Woodstock, I'd like to read something that Jimi Hendrix wrote after he played there. 500,000 halos outshined the mud and the history. We washed and drank in God's tears of joy. And for once, and for everyone, the truth was not still a mystery. That's the power of music. People always say that if you remember the 60s, you weren't really there. <laughs> not true. <laughs> I was there. I remember them. And I'll remember this night. Thank you so, so much for this honor. Thanks so much. Thank you, uh, Chris Russo. Once you get over your shyness, you're going to be okay. <laughs> this is terrific. Uh, you know, we, we, um, we didn't come down here tonight to uh, bring any attention to what we do or the Rock and Roll Forever curriculum or Little Kids Rock or any of those other things Rich talked about. We, we came down here tonight really to support what's going on right here at the Cal Basin Theater with this program, this rocket program. I mean, it is fantastic. You know, the rock era ended, and I miss it. Yeah. I think uh, I think we all miss it. I think society misses it because uh, rock and roll was about bands, and uh, that's why I started my radio show, and that's why this program is so important. Uh, there's something special about bands that's different than the individuals involved with pop music. Uh, bands are where you learn to work together, where you learn to compromise, you learn the art of persuasion, uh, you learn, uh, you know, individuals learn to uh, strive to accomplish the same goal. And, and I think um, that's missing from a lot of our society today. And I think kids being in bands is where you really learn a lot about life. And so um, I think this program is extraordinarily important uh, for that reason. And I'm really, really uh, so happy that, that it exists and, and that you guys will continue to support it. Please, please, uh, please do, and we, and we certainly will. So, uh, Bruce, Andy, Dan, and Zach, the incredible teachers that teach these kids. Bruce, Andy, and Zach. They really uh, did an amazing job. We were in rehearsal all, all day the other day, and, and uh, it's just uh, very, very impressive. It really is. Because, you know, we, we do a lot of these kind of things, and uh, these, these kids are some of the most talented kids we've ever seen. So, you're really proud of them. And really are. Thank you.